Pat, can you talk about the defensive effort in the second half, especially, and kind of the energy that um, Dickerson brought with those blocks, you know, kind of get the crowd going, that sort of thing? I, I just thought, you know, obviously Dickerson made some huge blocks, and, and he was definitely a force today, and that was very, very obvious. Um, but I thought all our bigs contributed. Even though Donald was in foul trouble, he contributed. I thought Julian contributed. Um, Brandon Taylor, obviously. Uh, foul trouble hurt us in the first half. Um, but, but I felt like our game plan was solid. That's a really good team. It's a really good team. I mean, they got a lot of different pieces. And that's a tough, hard-nosed team, like their coach. Um, he coaches harder than anybody I've ever seen. Um, but. Our team did a lot of great things, and I'm really proud of Jordan because I think that's the type of player he could be for us moving forward. Coach, are you now a little bit closer to that 40-minute game you're looking for? We're getting there. We're, we're definitely getting there. I don't think we started the game off real well. Um, a couple turnovers, um, maybe nerves, look like little nerves, um, which is good to see. Um, that GW brought the best out of us. And then we once the game got level, I, I really – I really liked what our team did as far as the defensive end and rebounding and communicating and just doing the little things that I've been preaching the last couple of days. I, I had a feeling we would play well today. We had one of our best practices yesterday. And I just told them, let's get back to just having fun. And I felt like we were we were pressing a little bit, you know, since Virginia Tech pressing, and instead of just enjoying the game a little bit. And I, and I felt like yesterday we enjoyed it, and today we came out and looked like we had fun out there. Hey, Coach. Um, what do you have to say about the play of Chef Garner played? I mean, he, he's a freshman, but he doesn't look like it on the court. What are some comments you have? You, you know what? He's, um, he's consistent. Um, he's coachable. And he's a winner. And that's a great combination for a point guard. Um, I can get on him. And he responds. He doesn't go into a shell. Um, he made some tough plays for us, big plays for us. He stretches the court for us. Um, he just did a lot of good things today. Um, and for as well as he played in these first 11 games, you know, and I'm even a little surprised um, of his maturity um, and his approach. And I give credit to DJ Nubo. Uh, they roomed together on the road, and he's really taken them under his wing. There was a play where in the first half, Pat, where Jordan blocked a shot, and uh, Ross grabbed it and kicked it to DJ, who kicked it ahead to Gino for a layup. Is that what you mean about having fun? Because it really looked like they were... Just yeah, when everybody's, terrible. like, you saw, uh, how many guys we play? 11 guys, 10 guys? Well, you saw every guy was dialed in, totally focused, understanding their role. They know we want to look up the floor, helping each other out. You know, we talk about culture. We talk about being great teammates. We talk about uh, doing little things, block shot, head up the floor, head up the floor, where your best player sometimes could pound it and want his, no, head up the floor, head up the floor, good basket. And... That's the way we need to play, but it starts on the defensive end. I mean, our defense was really solid today. Coach, you talked about Jordan's uh, defense already. Um, you ever expect him to make such a big impact with, in terms of energy and getting the crowd really fired up? Yeah, I actually I, I have, and he did it against Akron in the second half, if you recall that game at all. He, he was uh, energetic and bouncy and played really well. And when he does those things, now the guys start looking at him. I thought Brandon Taylor's pass to the rim where he was just sitting there for a dunk was huge. Great play. Again, guys knowing the roles, have clear heads, have a good understanding of, of time, score, and situation. Um, but we, I've been expecting this from Jordan. You know, I thought Donovan has been the savior for us over the last three or four games, down the stretch, his last five or six minutes. He's done some great things for us, making free throws, tip-ins, block shots, and it's nice to see Jordan get in, in the act. Uh, our fives are playing well. I told you that they would. It's taken a little time, but they're playing really well. Coach, down the stretch, you know, it's not typical of what we've seen since earlier this season where you guys got out to that lead. At what point did you kind of sense that the game was starting to unfold that way, and what made the difference there? As far as being up and then keeping it where it needs to be, um, I thought we shared the ball. Uh, I thought our guys looked really confident. I thought we got downhill against the 1-3-1, uh, which has been my our nemesis here. Um, but we did some good things. We got the ball to the middle of the of the floor. BT made some great shots, made some great passes, uh, put them on their heels a little bit. Um, and, we, and we were making our free throws. <laughs> you know, we only shot nine, but we made all of them, which is huge. And that really helps, especially down the stretch, 
You get yourself to the free throw line and make free throws. And we took care of the basketball. We, we, you know, 11 turnovers. I, I said, guys, we need to keep it under 10. 11, pretty good job because they really are good in transition. Really good. So we had to limit their easy looks. Coach, offensively, uh, over, over to the side. Uh, offensively, uh, toward, toward the end, how much, I guess, some patience there, getting some offensive rebounds, and, and the team pulled it back out to take some time off. How important was that to see that the patience play out there with that lead? You, you know what I call that? Playing smart. Um, well, we got some offensive rebounds. We, 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 we played really hard for a long time today. It wasn't a total 40-minute game, but it was it was close. And just time and score, we played really smart. We got rebounds, we chinned it, we threw it back out, um, which is smart basketball. Smart basketball, because the, the clock's your friend at that time. You know what I mean? you got to get the clock down. And we're making our free throws. So I thought they did a great job of understanding time and score today. Uh, Coach, just one more. I asked this with uh, DJ, but I'd like to get the coach's perspective. Um, how important is it to have guys like you know Thorpe off the bench? You know, you can just plug them in, and you know they're going to score for you. How does that build confidence for you guys? And how is that as a head coach being able to do that? I, I told you we have eight starters. I mean, we really do. I mean, Gino could start easily. John Johnson could start easily. John Johnson's been playing on a sprained ankle. Um, Donovan Jack was starting. But we noticed he's just, you know, it's better uh, for him in the second half to keep, try to keep him out of foul trouble. Easily could start. So you're bringing guys in that are veterans that have logged a lot of minutes. So you're not dropping uh, when you go to your bench. And I think Peyton and Julian played some good minutes today. It's unfortunate that Peyton got into foul trouble because he hits a big three. He was doing some good things. He, he was active. So um, it, it, they're good problems to have when you can go 9 and 10. Um. Good teams seem to have an ability to find a kind of identity or personality. Um, do you feel like you're getting closer to that? Because it seems like everyone knows. I mean, we've talked about roles before, but there's a lot of cohesion going on in games like this. Yeah, man, you're, you're exactly right. There's great chemistry. Guys like each other. We got a really good locker room. That's what I'm talking about. Culture. We got, you know, they every little. They're always hanging out together, doing things together, and I think they're selfless. And you know, we're selfless on the defensive end, but more importantly, we're becoming more selfless on the offensive end, which is what you saw today with 11 assists, which is great for us. We need to continue to do that. Um, but but I like the chemistry and the identity of this team. Uh, it's still defend and rebound, but I think we're getting mentally tougher too to end, uh, to finish games out. And I've probably been as hard on Ross as, as anyone, um, but he's had about 35 rebounds, only four turnovers, and he's not shooting it a lot. I mean, he seems to know what he needs to do, and he's doing it well. How big are those little things? Like you know, I'm so glad you brought him up because he makes big plays. Ten rebounds, and they're all big. And, and a tap back, which I don't know if it counts as a rebound. They're huge. He gets a rebound on the offensive end, kicks it out at the last four minutes of the game. He made big plays. I'd like to see him post up a little bit more. I'd like to see him drive the ball more. I think that'll open some. I think we can open some things up for him if he can. Uh, add some points. I really do. And I know he wants to, but he's understanding his role right now. He's playing it really well. I mean, 10 rebounds today, it's pretty good. Coach George Washington is one of the lowest amounts of three point shots attempted on the year. And do you think that kind of helped your interior play as well? Because guards were driving in the interior and there were a lot of lanes that were clogged up today. Yeah, again, I think our guys committed to the, the game plan, they understood it. And we did a good job of playing team defense. And when they got in there, there was a lot of congestion. It was crowded. It was very difficult for them to shoot over us because we're a pretty big team. And, and they are too, but we're pretty big. Um, and we dodged a couple bolts. Some of their three-point shooters had a couple shots that they normally make that didn't go down today. Um, so, uh, you know, again, they played Thursday. Not to give them an excuse, they played Thursday against a Big East team. So they had a quick turn uh, along with academics. So, you know, I think we probably caught them at the right time. Kind of almost on the same line, you know, how encouraging was it to see this kind of performance at a time of year where you've got finals week coming up? And how, at the same token, how do you carry that over to Drexel when you have a week off and you've got all those things in between? Yeah, well, we've had, last week was a challenge because um, there was a lot of presentations and there was a lot of exams and oral exams and it, it was a tough week for academics and, and we made sure we did the necessary things to make sure that they got their um, 
you know, studies done, whatever they need to get done. Um, and then we had a really, really good practice on um, on Saturday, yesterday. Um, and they, they know what they have to do. And for us to play like this, um, it must it must mean two things. They feel pretty good about their academics. And we did a good job of getting rest, keeping practice short, um, really n understanding the game plan and what we're supposed to do. Um, I had a feeling we were going to play 40 minutes. I really did. Um, practice was that good yesterday. One more. Newbill did what he does again today after a game where he, he kind of struggled um, the last game. How, how nice is it to have that kind of consistency out of where you just know? You know it was crazy? Every time he shoots it, I think it's in. You know what I mean? I just it looked really good today. His shot looked really, really good today. Um, but to have a guy like that, you know, I'll go back to my Villanova days, Randy Foy and Kyle Lowry and guys like that where you knew you were going to get a bucket, Scotty Reynolds for, for that matter. And then when I was at BU, it was, you know, John Holland and uh, Corey Lowe made big plays for us. So when those, and then DJ Irving who's on my staff, I mean, it seems like we always have that one guy who when you're in a crunch can make a big play or make a big, big pass. Um, I thought he did a really good job of um, finding his teammates today. Thank you.